you will be cut off. Read Matthew 7.21. Everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who the will of my Father which is in heaven. You have an opportunity to understand what the foreshadow was and the fulfillment was through scripture. He said you will be cut off. And you still, you still can be cut off. You, we still have to get to heaven if you believe in heaven. 16, and the first day there shall be a holy convocation. Oh, here's a holy convocation. Not the stuff the people that made of the day where they bring in high-priced preachers and singers and all these, these folks to sing and they call it holy convocation and try to raise a bunch of money. That's not, ain't nothing holy about that. Ain't nothing separate about that. And you, 17 again, you shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread for in that selfsame day I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. I skip 16. And this first day there shall be a holy convocation and on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation. So you have a holy convocation to set it off and you have a holy convocation to end it. No manner of work shall be done in them save that which every man must eat that only they may be done for you. Now this is what the Lord showed me years ago when it was first revealed to me these type of things in about 1998, 1999 is that uh, there are Muslims that come over in this country and I used to work a job, security job where there was a guy who was a Muslim and he would take his Ramadan off of his job. It's something they celebrate. I'm not going to get into the particulars. Study out for yourself. And I'm like, you're a foreigner in this country and you work at a secular job and that job has to honor your holy days and give you those days off without punishing you and allow you certain things. They was allowed to go pray and all these. So I'm thinking like, okay, all these believers have been in America all these years. And if we attempt to take our Sabbath off, if we attempt to take uh, the holy convocation of the observance of the Passover from the first day to the seventh, people get punished. You know why? Because we have not stood on what God said. It's strange to, to, to the employers in America because there's too many people that, 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 that live by money and fear instead of faith. It bothered me. That was way back. That was way back in 96, 1996. And that's when God started to drag me, bring me out. And I say drag because I fought like everybody else because I've been taught and raised to think one, one way and God was showing me another way. So it was up to the faith that I said I had in Jesus Christ to follow the way, the truth and the life, or stay in darkness and stay blind. But it bothered me, and God used what he needed to use to show me the difference. How it is that a person can come to this country, not born in this country, and, and, and say they, they believe in certain different, different beliefs, and based off what they believe in, they go to their employer and say, look, I need this is my holy day, and you can't punish me if I want to take it off and go do what I'm supposed to do. And here it is, we as believers have Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, and we don't take off. We don't even, some people don't even take off for their Sabbath or whatever day they Sabbath on. It's sad. Verse 18 in chapter 12 of Exodus, In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, even you shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days there shall be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the generation, excuse me, congregation of Israel to get whether he be a stranger or born in the land. So there was, you, you had to obey it. They, it was a strict, it was strict for a reason. And honestly, within us all, it still should be strict. I'm not saying I walk on water and I'm perfect. But when I do fall, like the Bible says, a righteous man falls, I get up. You shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitations shall you eat leavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Verse 22, And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike it on a lentil and the two sides of the post with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. It's given instructions in righteousness. How to be faithful. For the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians 
And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel of the two posts, side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses and smite you. Letting us know that he is in complete control and can nothing happen to you unless he allows it. 24. And you shall observe. That's why I tell people. We just read in Matthew in the beginning, observing all things I have said to you. Listen, and you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and thy sons forever. What, what, how, how is that not understood? This is something we are to observe forever. And observe really just means to, 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 to view it, to look at it, to teach it, to pre we observe it. We look at it. 24, and you shall observe this thing for ordinance to thee and thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye be coming to the land which the Lord shall give you, which the Lord will give you, according to he according as he has promised, that you keep this service. See, see, God gives us stuff according to his word, what he promised. It's not what we think we should have, it's what he promised. And I'm gonna be the first person to say that God promised me better stuff than I often give myself. Not that I don't want the best for me, it's sometimes I just shoot the ball too low. I'm thinking down here, God's thinking up here. I'm thinking affordable. And God's like, look, man, I own the tower upon a thousand hills. You look at the wrong thing. I want you to look over there. Stop looking at this junk and look at what I'm trying to give you. Stop trying to base off what you got and base off what I said. And it shall come to pass when you come into the land which the Lord will give you according to what he has promised that you keep this service. That's the covenant. I do this, you do that. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? Now, this is the catcher right here. When your children ask you, Dad, why are we doing this? So this is how we train up, a, train up a child in the way he should go when they are old. They will not depart from it. Because I come to know and understand the reason why I was doing those pagan things is because it was shown to me. It was taught me. People taught me how to cover eggs and hide eggs. People taught me how to buy a bun. People, people taught me these things. I didn't just learn. I didn't just start doing them. They were, they were, people taught me how to do anti-Christ things, which was sad because we have a Bible and we were believers. Why are you teaching me things that are not in the Bible? Because what's going to, what could have happened is I could have went on to teach my children. But thank God for grace in Jesus Christ. He, he, he stopped it with me. I was like, I'm not doing that. It's not in the Bible. And it comes to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service that you say it is? The sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshiped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded them, Moses, Aaron, so did they. Verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of, of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Verse 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the, in the night, he and all the servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get thee forth from among my people, both you, your children, Israel, and go. Serve the Lord as you have said. Also, this is why the Bible says and lets us know that he delivered us on eagle's wings. He delivered us on eagle's wings. If you know anything about eagles, eagles fly above the storms. They don't get down into the storms. They fly so high, they fly above the storms. Take your flocks, your herbs, in verse 32, and ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. So he has to be blessed where they was going. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land with, in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. So all the other plagues affected them. But this particular plague and final plague was real personal. This particular plague is dealing with the death of people. Sounds familiar? When there's a plague that's being allowed, that's literally killing people. People should be falling on their faces and repenting. 
Some people are, are, are like business as usual, acting like ain't nothing going on or nothing that happened. And that's what's really sad, is they're not seeing what God is allowing. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, we be all dead men. 34, and the people took their dough, for it was leaven, their kneading troughs, being bound up in the cloths where their, where their shoulders. So that's where we get unleavened bread for they didn't have time for it to rise because they were leaving with haste. When it's time to go, you got to go. They didn't have time for the bread to rise. So that's where we get unleavened bread from. 35, and the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. <laughs> now this is funny because they're going to use them same jewels or some of the same jewels of gold and make a golden calf as we know as the story goes on when they start the pilgrimage on their way to the promised land. They're going to use some things that they took from the Egyptians and do what the Egyptians had taught them to do. It's so amazing how the Bible will help you understand the things that we are not supposed to do that will get people in trouble. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. 37, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sakoth 600,000 on foot that, they, that were men besides children. Now hear this, this is so important to understand because people get caught up on male, female, black, white, green, yellow, Israelite, Egyptian, Hebrew, all these things. God created humanity. Verses 38, verse 38 in chapter 12 of Exodus said, And a mixed multitude went up also with them. So saying with them lets us know that there was a, some other people who wasn't the Israelites who, who left with them. If you ever wonder about the fact that this stuff is only for Hebrews or only for Israelites, or only for Jews, read this scripture right here. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds every very much cattle. It wasn't just Israelites. And if you, if you take that and go through the scripture, you will realize that some of these people went on to have descendants of people who was from their people. At the end of the day, we all his people, one blood. You're either a believer or you're a non-believer. Y'all can get caught up on race all y'all want to. Y'all can get caught up on status and all these. I'm not doing it. I've never done it. I thank God for Jesus because once you are adopted or accepted or received or accept the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all that stuff is irrelevant. You're either part of the body or you're not. You're either a believer or you're not a believer. You're either walking in darkness or you're walking in the light. Your color of skin ain't going to matter to the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ because he created everything for himself. And a mixed multitude went up also with them and the flocks and the herbs, every, even very much cattle, 39. And they, looked, and they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they had brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leaven, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. Wasn't time for the bread to rise. 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in, the, in Egypt was 430 years. 41. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day it came to pass, and all the host of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. 42. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the, of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. It's unfortunate that there are stories that has passed through time that have nothing to do with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we tell and share. I say we because I, I, I find myself being guilty every once in a while. Mary had a little lamb. Her sheep was white as snow. These things was drilled into me as a child. These stories was told me as a child. Even as a believer. Not, not, now we knew about this, but we didn't share these things. 
I mean, they're, Jack and Jill went up the hill. These, it's sad. I'm 52 years old this year, God willing, in April, and these stories are in my memories because this is the stuff that we was taught. But you know what? The enemy is a copycater, and, and, and he copies things that we were supposed to do for the Lord for himself to get us away from God because he know if we disobey God, we will not inherit his promises. 42, it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for the bringing of them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel and their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall be no stranger, there shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of his house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. He, he, he's explaining things that need to be known so you understand how his covenant works. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. All, everybody. There was no exemption. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee in the land, excuse me, sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover unto the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. So he, he, he's given an exception for them to be included. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He's given an exception for a stranger to be a partaker. And then let him come near to keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. At that particular time in the history, obviously, of the Bible, it was a physical thing. Now we know when Jesus came, it is spiritual. Because Jesus explained to Nicodemus in John 3 was flesh is flesh and what spirit is spirit. One law shall be to him that is home born. And unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Verse 50. Thus did all the children of Israel as the Lord commanded. Moses and Aaron, so did they. 51 and finally. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Excuse me. So God used what he created in them to glorify himself. It's a whole lot of word, a whole lot of revelation. I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, your anointing, your power, and your presence. We thank you, Father God, because you are almighty God, all by yourself. You said it, you did it, and you're doing it through us. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that there are those that are blind, Father God, that they will hear the word of the living God like blind Bartimaeus and scream out for salvation. Acknowledge you for who you were, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Come to know you and the pardon of their sins and go on to preach and stand and live on the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray for this, this country, this nation, this world, Father God. Pray for the leaders that they will preach the undoctrinated word of God, Father God. There are so many people preaching all kinds of other stuff that has nothing to do with who you was, is, and is to come. You let us know by lifting you up, you will draw all men, Father God. Too many people are lifting up problems, not promises. I'm not here to talk about them, Father God. I'm here to talk about you. I thank you for this opportunity, this platform. I give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. May God bless you and heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.